Have you ever wondered how so many old vintage PSA 10 cards can fetch thousands of dollars? Of course, nostalgia, the popularity of the Pokemon, the artwork all play a role, but it really comes down to one simple but major thing, scarcity. You see, if you were to buy one PSA 10 Holo Gengar from the legendary 2002 set Expedition, you would own 1.26% of the entire market for these vintage Gengars, which 1.26% does not sound like a lot, but when we compare it to the 0.0129% that you would get from buying a single Charizard alternate art from Brilliant Stars, we're talking about you owning a market share that's bigger of upwards of 97 times by going vintage in this scenario and kind of let you know how many cards are being graded in the modern age. Now as somebody with a decently sized collection in super modern Pokemon, it's important to understand the risk. Now so many people want to act like sealed investing is foolproof and your product is just always going to appreciate massively. If you guys appreciate this type of content, go ahead and click the subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. But the truth is, there's just so many risks that you have to be aware of. And this is another risk right here. Okay, just being flat out honest, none of the high-end ultra-modern cards are rare. I mean, they're not even close to rare. We have almost 8,000 slabs of this PSA 10 Altar Charizard. We have 3,000 slabs for the Lost Origin Garatina. We have well over 2,000 slabs for the Moonbryon. So it's really just a night and day difference when we compare the populations of 2024 compared to 10, 20 years ago. We're just never going to see those days again of one of the top cards of hollow Gengar having a 79 pop. Even around a decade ago, the Phantom Forces Dialga, we're talking sub 75 pops, just some extremely rare cards that we will never see again. It's going to be very interesting to see how sealed product and slabs appreciate over the next 5 to 15 years, simply because the price of the best cards graded in a 10 are usually what fuels the price of a booster box to some extent. Basically, you open Phantom Forces for the hope of pulling the silver dialga and possibly getting a 10 you know obviously the chances of that happening are extremely low but in a perfect world scenario if that happens you can basically make your money back on the booster box even though you're paying a small fortune to open it um same thing with base set if you get psa 10s we're talking massive money for expedition psa 10s on those top cards we're talking thousands and thousands of dollars so some of the allure of buying those top end booster boxes is the very small possibility that you could make your money back if everything goes right but it's hard for me to see a scenario of that happening with these ultra modern high-end cards because there's just so many of them you know so as somebody with thousands of dollars in sealed pokemon this is just very important for me to take into account you know relatively to me that's a lot of money that i'm putting towards this hobby now having said all that you know populations are out of control things are not rare i still think the future of so Pokemon investing is very bright, even considering these massive populations. I mean, we saw an enormous amount of Charizard UPCs get sold through. I'm talking tens of thousands. And we finally saw that price start to appreciate little by little, right when Crown Zenith first released. We saw a ton of product get sold through. It was a very hyped set. And we saw $60 ETBs. And we did not see that price drop for a very long time until actually recently the last two months or so we did get crown zenith etb reprints so there's definitely examples here of modern products still rising even though the volume of that product is at levels that we've never seen before so i will definitely be watching the market close to see if this modern product is still being bought up at the rates that it is now you know, like I said earlier in the video, the volume of this product is at levels that we've never seen before, but also the players, the investors, the collectors are also at levels that we've never seen before. So there definitely is a possibility that these two variables can just cancel out. And so those vintage rates of appreciation will still be on the horizon. I think the main thing that we should take away from this is in the new age of modern, you just want to be more selective of what you're buying. There's so much product. There's so many 
cards being graded um you really can't afford to go dud 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 on collection boxes on more pico this more pico that things like that you know when we don't have the scarcity that we've had before you know going back 20 years ago 10 years ago to x and y even sun and moon four or five years ago the population numbers were starting to increase but we definitely did have a nice factor of scarcity in those sets but yeah dealing with 7,000 population cards of the best card of a set you know 3,000 2,000 4,000 those are very high numbers to be dealing with so you're gonna want to take more time when you make a play on these products and slabs you're really gonna want to research slabs more and the product more and see maybe you can find some hidden value in there where there's actually a very low population on what you think will be a very desired card and that's really how you're gonna have to play the game because if you try to invest in a population of a 7700 card it's probably going to be a very long time before you can see appreciation on that or you're going to see a very slow rate of appreciation just because it's so many cards so many slabs to get through it's just not really going to be too feasible that you're going to do well on that product in a one to three year time frame just because there is going to be so many constantly going through the market being sold etc you're just going to want to do your homework and that can be watching more pokemon investing videos like this one um, many other great youtubers out there that actually go way deeper into the numbers so yeah definitely a lot of resources available and if you don't want to do all that digging i mean booster boxes just roll everything the booster box appreciation on any set in the history of pokemon is just fantastic you know i kind of view that as the index fund of pokemon and when you start going slabs psa 9 this psa 10 this i'm gonna buy a near mint copy of that you know i do understand the collecting part you know i really do like having a binder i mean having a binder of your best cards or a stack of slabs of your most desired cards is a very good feeling but if we break it down to the basics um booster boxes are just the king of them all but anyways thanks for watching i really appreciate it i hope you guys have an amazing weekend take care